Hi folks, how's it going? Uh, I'm going to record another Sunday School lesson. Sorry, we used to worry about hat hair, well now we have to worry about mask hair, so a little disheveled there, but that's okay. Uh, we're still in the Gospel Project. We're going to be in Matthew 17, 1 through 5. Uh, still kind of in the corona. We've started back to church in person and Sunday School in person, but I uh, thought I'd still go ahead and do this. And uh, hopefully y'all enjoy it and get something out of it. Um, it was kind of cool to have uh, Friday Night Football, the, the Coyotes, this, this weekend. So got to listen to that. Uh, and just things kind of slowly getting back to some semblance of the old normal. Uh, but we're still adjusting to the new normal. So we'll pray. And we'll, like I said, we in Matthew 17, 1 through 1 through 13. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we come before the throne and we just ask you just to take these words and uh, as we go through the, the internet, Father, that your word be carried out and that it will not be returned void. Take it and use it to your glory. Use me as your mouthpiece. Just speak through me and let it not be me but you, Father. Send the Holy Spirit to go through to the ever place, everybody that hears this or sees this. And uh, let it touch their hearts and lives. Father, just uh, be with our national leaders, our state leaders, our county leaders, our city leaders, and our church leaders as we endeavor to uh, go through all of this. Father, we just love you and thank you for all that you do for us. These things we ask your precious holy name. Amen. So we are in Matthew uh, 17, starting in verse 1. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them on a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured in front of them, and his face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. I will set up three shelters here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down on and were terrified. Jesus came up, touched them, and said, Get up, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw that no one except Jesus Look up, they saw no one except Jesus alone. Excuse me. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. So the disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Elijah is coming and will restore everything, he said. But I tell you, Elijah has already come and they didn't recognize him. On the contrary, they did whatever they pleased to him. And the way the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. So we go back over and we're talking about the transfiguration of Jesus. It's uh, also recorded in Mark uh, chapter 9 uh, verses 2 through 13 and Luke uh, chapter 9. Also, verses 28 through 36, it says, Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them on a high mountain by themselves. As best I can tell, this is probably about six days after feeding of the 4,000 uh, there that they did, uh, uh, that we studied uh, last week. And so they were there and they were on this mountain and then all of a sudden, uh, Jesus' face started shining as bright as the sun. Excuse me, everybody. Hmm. Which made me think about um, John chapter 1. Let's see. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Yes. It says, in the, beginning, the, uh, in the be beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things are made through Him. Without Him was not anything made 
that it was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And in uh, 1 John, it talks about Jesus is the light of the world, and in him is no darkness. So we see that um, the light, Jesus is the light. And if you read through Revelations, it talks about that there's no need of sun or moon or stars because Jesus is there. Jesus is the light. And so as he's standing there, he, his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them and was talking with them. Often wondered how the disciples, here again, this is all retrospect as well. Uh, you know, we had the benefit of uh, the armchair quarterback or hindsight's 2020. I often wonder, you know, how did Peter, James, and John recognize Elijah and Moses? I mean, I don't know if it's through history or legend. I mean, we have paintings and stuff of our forefathers like Washington and Lincoln and uh, different individuals like that. But to my knowledge and recollection, they didn't have anything like that from history like we do. And, you know, we have different renderings of different individuals from history past that we see what they looked more like, what they looked like. But anyway, we see that Moses and Elijah appeared and started talking with him. I can just imagine it to be like three old buddies met up on the corner and started chit-chatting. You know, not that Jesus grew up with anybody, but, well, actually, they grew up with him, if you think about it. I, I just now thought about it that way. But anyway, three old friends meeting up and hanging out and visiting. And uh, while they were still speaking, suddenly a bright light covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Where have we heard that before? Remember when Jesus was baptized and the, the dove ascended and the, the heavens opened up and the same verse was, was quoted there. Same verse was said there. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This time it said listen to him. So I kind of envision that this is more or less like uh, the reappearance of the Trinity. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit came as a dove but I can see the Holy Spirit being uh, as a cloud, as this cloud came and settled on them. And when the disciples heard this, they fell down, uh, face fell face down and were terrified. And Jesus uh, touched them and said, Come, uh, get up, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus alone. Uh, yeah, I can imagine they were afraid because, you know, uh, the Bible teaches that no one will be able to see the face of God. Now, matter of fact, Moses even wanted to see God, and he said, you cannot because you cannot stand my glory. And so he said, what I'll do is I'll put you in the cleft of the rock, and as I pass by, I'll put my hand over you, and then you can see my the, the back, my back as I go past. And so we see that uh, they were scared and terrified, not to mention there's no telling what the resonance and the sound of God is. Uh, we generally think of some big, deep, rolling, roaring voice, bass, voice. But who knows what God actually sounds like. Um, but then Jesus touched them and said, Get up, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one but Jesus alone. So here again, uh, they were by themselves with Jesus and as they were going down, I can just imagine the disciples like, can you believe what just happened? What just happened? Can you tell me what just happened? I can just ain't, you know, I can't even imagine what their conversation was, was, was like. And then as they were coming down, Jesus said, don't tell anyone about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Of course, he's been foreshadowing this all along throughout all the scriptures here. And so uh, they, they said, then the disciples asked him, when, why then do the scribes say Elijah must come first? Elijah is coming and restore everything, he replied. But I tell you, Elijah has already come and they didn't recognize him. On the contrary, they did whatever they pleased to him. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he, was, that he had spoken 
to them about John the Baptist. And so we see here that they talked about Elijah. Elijah is one of only two men in the history of mankind that did not die. If you'll read back in First and Second Kings, it talks about how uh, Elijah and Elisha were walking about, and Elisha would not leave Elijah's side because uh, Elijah asked what, what he could do for him, and Elijah said, I want a double portion of your spirit or of your blessing, of your power. And Elijah said that if you'll if you're with me when I'm taken up, that that will that'll happen. That'll take place. And so he wouldn't leave Elijah's side for love nor money. And so eventually the chariot of fire came by the Jordan and took up Elijah and left Elisha behind. But anyway, so Elijah is one of two men that did not die. The other one is Enoch, which was Noah's grandfather, great grandfather, grandfather, great grandfather. Anyway, a relative of Noah. And if you'll think over and flip over into Revelations, it talks about how Elijah is going to come again. Elijah and Moses, or that there are two witnesses going to come. And a lot of people speculate that it's going to be Elijah and Moses. And so uh, we see that Jesus was alluding to the fact that uh, John the Baptist was Elijah. Reing I guess you could say reincarnated the spirit in the spirit of Elijah. And so we see that he was proclaim, proclaiming uh, God in the wilderness. And the scribes and Pharisees, well, actually Herod did what he wanted to with him. If you remember, uh, Herod asked his uh, stepdaughter or his daughter what, what she would like because she danced for him and pleased him. And she went and told Mama. And Mama said, give me the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. And so uh, that's what they did, and so they killed John the Baptist. And so they were talking about that, and Jesus once again foreshadowed the, the thought that uh, he was going to suffer at the hands of man, just like John the Baptist did. So we see there that we've got the glory of God that is uh, uh, shown to these disciples, and we could ask God to show us his glory as well, and he will in some manifestation. So we'll go back and we're, we'll look at the fill in the blanks. Um, God's glory. The glory of God is His manifest work. The way He represents His perfect character. Though His activity, uh, through His activity, another senses, sense of the word is the inherent beauty of God and the unbearable brightness and the beauty of His being. He radiates his own attributes and character characteristics to all witness, uh, to all, all to witness. So the fill in the blanks is character, beauty, and brightness. So if any of y'all have ever wondered what I'm talking about, fill in the blanks in our Sunday school book, it it has a thing for for blanks for those that have the the the, the quarterly, uh, and then the other one is uh, Christ's exaltation. Christ's exaltation. One more page. It says, uh, Whereas the death of Christ was the ultimate example of His humiliation, the resurrection of Christ from the dead is the first and glorious example of Christ's exaltation. Christ was exalted when God raised him from the dead, and the Christ was exalted when he ascended to the Father's right hand. He will be exalted by all creation when he returns. All of these aspects work together to magnify the glory and worth of Christ, resulting in praise of the glory of his grace uh, in rescuing sinners. So resurrection... Ascended, returns, and grace. So hopefully you got something out of it. Kind of a short lesson. How much more can you add to the transfiguration of Christ and how to apply it to our lives? Just know that we uh, have a Heavenly Father and He's there for us and He died and was buried and rose again and He will come again. Uh, so watch, watch the uh, sky ready to fly. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time and we thank you for the examples in the Bible and John, uh, P Peter, James, and John, and uh, then how Jesus was fellowshipping with Elijah and, and Moses. 
Father, we just uh, ask you to figure out how to, for us to figure out how to apply this to our lives, that we can share you with others, uh, and just know that you're coming again in your power and your glory, Father, and you will be exalted again. Father, just be with us and keep us safe and healthy. Uh, we just ask that you bless everybody that watches this. Father, we just love you and thank you for all that you do for us. These things we ask your precious holy name. Amen. Remember, one life, three R's, SDG.